بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Islam promotes science and knowledge unlike other religions for example centuries ago there was a great clash that its ripple effect its consequences are present until today and this clash was between the church and scientists we know how they used to forbid sciences whether it's biology whether it is geology whether it's astrology or astronomy we know what they did to galileo who talked about the rotation of earth what they said about newton who spoke about gravity we know what they said about scientists who spoke about the universe about the solar system about the galaxies and how they used to hunt them down literally and kill them and with the progress of science there there is a scientist reach a conclusion that christianity does not coincide with science it goes on the opposite direction and that is why they disbelieved in that religion and that is why they called for the separation of church and state because it could not coincide it could not live together in islam it is completely a different story islam promotes knowledge islam promotes science and you will not find in the quran or in the sunnah something that goes against science and if you do then the problem is in science not in the quran not in the sunnah because these are only theories yet the quran is the ultimate truth and the ultimate fact islam promotes knowledge and that is why the first word to be revealed to the prophet alayhi salatu salam was iqra which can be translated into read or recite allah says read in the name of your lord who has created all that exists has created man from a clot read and your lord is the most generous subhanahu wa ta'ala who has taught the writing by the pen has taught man that which he knew not look at us nowadays we claim to know everything don't we whenever you open a subject if you are four or five people sitting together open any subject and you will find people mashallah speaking with full confidence politics yes the arabian spring the arabian summer the arabian winter mashallah all seasons talk about cars everybody knows about cars economics yes we know why the uh, credit crunch took place it is all because of the jews subhanallah you ask them about medicine and you will get people telling you if you say ya akhi wallah i have this pain here you will find 10 among us mashallah uh, uh, surgeons and 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 physicians and yeah you have to get some uh, herb you have to do this and that and drink it before you go to sleep inshallah it's it's okay we claim to know everything yet we are the most ignorant people on earth so many times in corporates in in companies usually they look at what they have achieved throughout the past year so usually when people make presentations and they say uh, in the first quarter i managed to do this and that and i succeeded in securing so many deals and preventing the company from incurring losses because i did and i did and this by itself is an indication of ignorance not only that it is one of the types of shirk do you believe that when you say this you are committing a kind or a type of shirk ibn abbas may allah be pleased with him said that when 
a person says, Alhamdulillah, had it not been for the duck of my neighbor or for the dog of my neighbor who made a sound when the burglar was trying to break into my house, had it not been for the duck, the burglar would have stolen my house. Ibn Abbas says, whoever says this, he had committed an act of shirk. Because he attributed the blessing, in the favor of Allah Azza wa Jal, to a duck or to a dog. And likewise, when you talk about a presentation, you do not attribute it to your knowledge, to your ability. I managed to do this. I succeeded in doing that. I protected my company from these and those losses. You always say, it's the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal who did this. And I managed with the blessing of Allah. I managed with the favor of Allah. Always attribute everything. Because you do not know anything. And the most of us who, mashallah, are like big fat balloons full of hot air. Yes, I have a PhD. I have a master's degree. I have this and that. I know. Ya akhi, you do not know anything. Allah tells you in the Quran so that you would remember always. It is not you. It is His grace, Azza wa Jal. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah has brought you out from the wombs of your mother while you know nothing. Is it a fact? When you came out of your mother's womb, did you know anything? Not a single thing. And it is Allah, Azza wa Jal, who gave you the hearing, the sight, and the hearts that you might give thanks to Allah, Azza wa Jal. So the knowledge that you possess, it is not yours. It is not from your own doing. It is from Allah Azza wa Jal who has given it to you. Did you thank Allah for that? Or did you misuse it in means that he does not approve of? Islam values people with knowledge, values scientists. Allah Azza wa says, Allah will exalt in degree those of you who believe and those of you who have been granted knowledge. Allah will exalt them. Not because of their wealth, but because of the knowledge He bestowed upon them. And never you will find in the Quran that Allah orders the Prophet والسلام, to ask for more wealth, for more wives, for a better health, for a better position in life, never. The only command from Allah Azza wa Jal to His Prophet in the whole of the Qur'an to ask the increase of is in ilm wa qurrabbi zidni ilman and this is what you should pray and ask Allah Azza wa Jal in your prostration. Zidni ilman and you say my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Allah Azza wa Jal values those who have knowledge. Say, are those who know equal to those who do not know? No, they can't be equal. You cannot have someone who knows his deen, who knows Allah Azza wa Jal. You cannot have him equal to someone who is ignorant, someone who is not possessing such knowledge knowledge and Allah Azza wa Jal joined those who know with him in the Quran just to show you their level where Allah says Allah bears witness and the angels and those having knowledge that there is no God worthy of being worshipped except Allah so these two the angels and those who are granted knowledge, Allah Azza wa Jal joined them with His, or with, with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala in such testimony. Now one may ask, okay, what kind of knowledge are you referring to? Is it science that we know? Physics, chemistry, medicine, geology, or is it something special? Well. Scholars say that knowledge, science in Islam is divided into two types. Islamic knowledge and conventional knowledge. 
So what is meant by Islamic knowledge? It is the knowledge that is based on the Quran and the Sunnah, such as the knowledge of the Quran. A person who recites the Quran is considered to be half of the Quran, of the Quran mashallah. The knowledge of the interpretation of the Quran. You may have someone who's half of, who knows the Quran, but if you ask him, what's the meaning of this word? What's the meaning of this ayah? What was it revealed in? I don't know. So therein, he, he has a deficiency in his knowledge. Because reciting the Quran without knowing the meaning is good. But definitely is not close at all to someone who knows the meaning. Knowing the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, And you ask people, Ya Akhi, Subhanallah, open any subject about halal and haram with your friends and see how many fatwas you get. You get tens of fatwas. Yes, this is halal. No, 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 this is halal, haram. Everybody, Ya Akhi, do you have evidence? Oh, no, I heard someone. So, do you have a hadith? No. If you tell someone a hadith nowadays, then I remember one in Saudi, a brother who was about 55 years of age. I was talking to him and he was apparently a liberal. Yani new Muslim. In the sense that he's Saudi but he doesn't believe in the Quran and Sunnah so much. He believes that what America and Europe say is correct. This is a liberal Muslim, a new trend. So I was talking to him and I was passionately trying to convince him. With diplomacy and tolerance. And he said, Ya Akhi, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Qur'an, he's telling me, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying in the Qur'an, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ And I was doing this. I said, excuse me? He said, yes, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Verily that deeds are by intention. And I said, Akhi, I think I, I'm, يعني, I'm trying to be polite. I think this is a hadith that was in the Bukhari and Muslims narrated by Umar ibn Khattab. I always thought it was an ayah. And then the guy stopped speaking. يعني, he knew that he fell into a very big hole that he dug for himself. Ignorance is harmful. So you have to know the Quran. This is the, the, the knowledge that, that Allah Azza wa praises in the Quran. You have to know the sunnah. You have to know fiqh. Halal and haram. How to pray. How to fast. How to make hajj. You have to know also what is known as usul al-fiqh. Fundamentals of fiqh. Which is the science that governs the, يعني, uh, the things or the rules and regulations that governs the fiqh itself. And this is something that is high. And you cannot give fatwa if you cannot master this science and you have the nasikh al mansukh and you have uh, the knowing the the, the the language which is arabic without arabic you cannot be even a good student of knowledge you have to master these things these are the sciences that is are known to be islamic sciences and the second type of knowledge or science is the conventional such as well even this conventional is divided into Two sections. The first section is the halal section, such as medicine, engineering, geology, biology, uh, pharmacology, anything, mechanics, whatever, anything that deals with the dunya. And it has nothing to do with the Quran and Sunnah. But if you have a good intention, Allah Azza wa Jal will reward you for it. Why? Because this is a communal obligation. Imagine that everyone in our city is a hafiz, is a scholar, is a da'i, but we don't have any medical doctors. Will, be sin will we be sinful? Yes, all of us will be sinful. Because it is part of the community that a portion of them must be doctors, engineers, pilots, businessmen, people working in the economy, etc. But if all of them became scholars and da'is and they neglected what makes no farmers, where will we eat? Read Sahih al-Bukhari, Shaykh. 
the book on farming. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'll read the whole thing. Uh, crops will not grow. I have to uh, work. So this is a communal obligation. Some of us have to do it. And with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. You see it now. A lot of the da'is, they're not actual scholars in Islam. They are either engineers, medical doctors, businessmen, professionals, uh, uh, scientists, and they acquired the Quran and the Sunnah because there is no contradiction. Nothing stops you from doing this. So this is the first type of the conventional sciences, which is halal. If you have a good intention, mashallah, you're rewarded. In the dunya and in the akhirah, because it pays well as well. The second type of conventional sciences is the haram sciences, such as can you give me examples of haram sciences? Uh, very good. Astrology. One says, okay, by when were you born? Uh, what's your mother's name? What does my mother's name has to do with it? Trust me. Okay, and the stars. Okay, tomorrow this will, this will happen to you. And he tells you a hundred lies. One of them is, is correct. So shaitan comes to you. And when the thing that he told you will happen, happens, Ya Allah, ya this guy knows the unseen. And a lot of the people go into astrology. They go into uh, zodiacs and signs. And they tell you, Yaqi, what is your zodiac? The guy says, I'm a bull. And the other one says, uh, I'm, a, I'm a goat. I'm, uh, they have different you know, zodiacs, a scorpion. Yaqi, subhanAllah, all of these bad things, what are you doing? And they tell you that, yeah, I can't go tomorrow to work. Why? It says that something bad is going to happen. If you believe in this, Akhi, renew your Islam. You have committed an act that nullified your Islam. Whoever believes a fortune teller, he's a kafir. Whether this fortune teller has a crystal ball, and she's an old lady of, nine, of 95 years of age, and she tells you that this one, this was going to happen to you. Or the fortune teller reads your palm. In Arabia, we have people holding your palm and seeing, MashaAllah, you should change your soap. It's not good for you. And, but, but this and this will happen. Some of them in Syria, in Egypt, in parts of Arabia, they read this Turkish coffee. After they finish it, they turn the cup upside down and the coffee remaining makes tracks. And then they look and say, Oh, subhanAllah, tomorrow you're just gonna have, you're gonna have a good thing happening to you. And also there's something bad. I can see a friend of yours doing something bad. Everybody, tomorrow, inshallah, see what's going to happen. You will be, ha you'll have something good and you'll have something bad and one of your friends will do something bad. Every day, Shaykh, this is happening. This is not fortune telling. This is taking you for a stupid person. Whoever believes this is a, a kafir. The Prophet tells us, but if I do it for the fun, every time I open magazines and newspapers, they have these, you know, zodiacs and signs. I just read it for fun. Yeah, if you read it for fun, Allah will not accept 40 days of your prayer. That's all. You're a Muslim, alhamdulillah. So one says, okay, then I will not pray. If Allah is not going to accept 40 days of prayer, why should I pray? Okay, don't pray. Then you become a kafir again. So no, you have to pray for 40 days, though Allah is not going to reward you for it, just to stay and remain a Muslim. So this is science, and it's science, it's, it's been uh, uh, taught in, in universities, yet it is haram science. What else? Hmm? Philosophy, some of the philosophy is haram, but not all of it. So it, it cannot be, yeah, it depends, the, but the majority of philosophy, it makes you doubt Allah because this is how they start. First of all, doubt Allah. Is Allah existing? Let's think. Asking this question is kufr by itself. No, what else? Theory of evolution. Studying biology and thinking that your grand, grand, grandfather is an ape. When people, when, when I go, when I travel to Europe and say this, yes, this is a, a true Yani, uh, uh, theory. Akhi, wallah, if your grandfather is an ape, mine is a human. It's up to you. And this is, yani, 
much, much easier to prove logically that it is a false theory. Yani, mashallah, we've evolved from apes. Okay, the poor apes now, why didn't they evolve? When will they evolve? Yani, how did it reach the missing link and khalas stopped? It changed his mind. No, apes, chimpanzees, uh, remain as you are. Why? We're the lucky ones. So, this is part sorcery. You know sorcery? Sihir, magic, black magic. This is a science. Also, it is science, but it is forbidden for you to learn. Oh, no, what, what about Sheikh if I watch Harry Potter? Is it okay? No, it's not okay. It's haram. Sheikh, it's very nice. It's haram. It's teaching you haram things, giving life to the dead. Okay, making someone a, a, a hamster and returning it into a living being, flying, doing this, doing that, controlling, knowing the future, knowing the unseen, all of this is kufr. So it is not permissible. What else? Sciences, now, now in, you have universities. They teach you in, in universities music. It's art. Teaching you theater or, or, or acting. This is science. But is it halal or haram? It is haram. So anything that leads to haram is considered to be also haram. Therefore, when you want to identify what science is, what knowledge is, how do I know? What is knowledge? One says, to know the Quran and to know the Sunnah. That is it. So if I know the Quran by heart, and if I know the Sunnah, all of it, and I know the Fiqh, am I considered to be at the sight of Allah, a knowledgeable person? Yes or no? I know the Quran from cover to cover, and I know the Sunnah, and I know the Fiqh. You ask me any fatwa, I'll give it to you. Everything according to the Quran and Sunnah. Am I considered to be a person of knowledge at the side of Allah? No, you cannot be knowledgeable, you cannot be a scientist, you cannot be a scholar at the side of Allah by only knowing these sciences. You have to have the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. That is why Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ That verily, it is only those who have knowledge among his slaves that fear Allah. What does that mean? This means that if a person who cannot read and write, who does not have any degree, who does not have a car, who does not have an owner house, whose clothes are not as fashionable as ours, who has nothing of this life. A person, if you look at him, you... A'udhu Billah, Alhamdulillah, I'm not like him. Yet, he prays five times in the masjid. He never does any single haram. Not in eating, not in looking, not in listening. His income is 100% pure. He connects to the next of kin. He does everything he does because he fears Allah Azza wa This is considered to be, ish, alim. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ on, now turn the table. If someone has PhD in Quran, and he has a PhD in Hadith, and he has two BAs in Sun and Fiqh and in Arabic and so on, and mashallah, his wall is decorated with certificates, yet he's arrogant. He looks down at people. He cares less if he listens to music or watches movies or he curses. He prays a, 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 a prayer, Maghrib and Isha, mashallah, he prays in the masjid. Fajr is too early now, astaghfirullah, 3.30, I'm crazy. And Zuhr, uh, uh, he's in the, uh, at the office, he may pray, he may not. Asr, he's asleep. Or every day he goes to home, and he tells his wife, when the adhan is called, serve the lunch. Because the Prophet said, السلام, that if the lunch is there, eat, even if the prayer is on. So alhamdulillah. Or if he comes before uh, Asr prayer, he tells her, okay, give me some garlic and some onions, and khalas, alhamdulillah, I have an excuse. Is this considered to be a alim? No. Therefore, it is 
the, 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 the rule of thumb, it is the criteria that we classify someone to be a scholar in the sense of scholar of knowing Allah Azza wa Jal is when he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why in Mustadrak al-Hakim, the Prophet say, looked once at the heavens and said, this is the time when knowledge will be uplifted. It will be taken from the hearts of people. Ubad ibn Samit, may Allah be pleased with him, when he reported this hadith, he said, I know what is the first branch of knowledge that would be uplifted. So his companion said, what is it? He said, it is al-khushur. It is the submissiveness and concentration in salah. Ubadah, at his time, huh? at the time of the Prophet said, it is soon you will enter a masjid and you will not see one single person with khushur. Do we have this in our masjid? I pray as an imam in Jeddah. And when I finish prayer, what does an imam do? He faces the congregation. So first row, second row, they prayed with me, they finished. The third and behind that, they are completing their prayer. Wallahi, I make tasbih and I look in their faces. And I see people looking at me. <laughs> yeah, he's praying. Instead of looking at his prostration spot, he's... So I do this. And the guy looks in the, and he, he feels ashamed. On, wallahi, on the left, on the far left and side, right, and right, uh, you see people doing, and looking at me, yeah, what's wrong with me? And I look at them, and, they, and then this, they, they, they are playing hide and seek. They are playing with, and, and what kind of khushu is this? I prayed next to a, a, a brother, Zalla Khair, in his mid-fifties. And while he was uh, praying, the, the phone rang in his pocket. Wallahi, he did this. I'm next to him. He did this. And he's going down and up. Uh, okay. I thought he's going to send an SMS. <laughs> but I did, I, and maybe he was embarrassed or, or it was disabled. I don't know. What kind of khushur do we have? This is actual knowledge. It is not how many books you've read. It's not how many times you finish the Quran. It, it, what khushu is, what knowledge is, the actual knowledge, it is what helps you in your life. The actual manifestation of all what you've read and learned is when you reach a fork of the road. Should I do haram or not? What do you do? This is your actual knowledge. And that is why I get a lot of emails from bro brothers from the Gulf and from abroad. Sheikh, I'm a chartered accountant. And I just discovered that riba is haram. And everything in my work is haram. What should I do? Resign. Full stop. The following day, Zakallah Khair Sheikh, I've resigned and pray for me that I look for a good job. This is knowledge. Because this fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, this full trust, in Allah and dependence and reliance tells you that this man knows Allah. And on the other hand, go to the other Muslims, Shaykh, then I will starve, then I will die, then I will beg. So what to do? I have a raise. They're promoting me. So inshallah Allah will forgive me. Where is your knowledge? Where is your attending the classes? When? Where is your listening to all different courses? So. The best kind of knowledge is the Islamic knowledge, providing that you have the good intention and the fear of Allah. Otherwise, it is like any other knowledge. And the Prophet tells us, alayhi salatu wasalam, that there is nothing equivalent to studying the sciences of Sharia, the sciences of the deen. In the authentic hadith, the Prophet tells us, Whoever follows a path to seek knowledge, Allah will make it easy for him, a path to paradise. What kind of knowledge? Islamic knowledge. How do we know? Listen to the remaining of the hadith. The angels beat their wings in approval of the seeker of knowledge and those who are in the heavens and on the earth pray for forgiveness for the scholar. 
even the fish in the water. Subhanallah. You're asleep in your home and you have creatures of Allah seeking Allah's forgiveness for you while you're asleep. The superiority of the scholar over the worshiper is like the superiority of the moon over all other heavenly bodies. The scholars are the heirs of the prophets. For the prophets did not leave behind dinars or dirhams. Rather, they left behind knowledge. So whoever gains knowledge has gained great good fortune. So this hadith by itself should help you determine how to proceed in your life. Even if you're 60, even if you're 70. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, the compiler of the tafsir, one of the greatest scholars of Islam, on his dying bed, some of those visiting him that said, the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, so and so. On his dying bed, he instructed the slave to bring him a pen and a paper. And then he told the man, repeat the hadith again, he's writing it down. His companion said, subhanallah, you are on die, your dying bed and you are writing this hadith? And he said, yes, a proper Muslim does not leave seeking knowledge even when he is dying. And some of the scholars said, with the ink pot till the graveyard. Yani I keep on writing until I reach the graveyard and they bury me. This is the knowledge. The, the majority of Muslims nowadays talk without knowledge. And Allah Azza wa Jal told them that, follow not that which you have no knowledge. وَلَا تَقُفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Something you don't know, refrain. Do not speak. Why? Because verily the hearing and the sight and the heart of each of those you will be questioned on the day of judgment by Allah Azza wa Jal. And by highlighting the importance of knowledge in Islam, without acting upon this knowledge, it turns against you. So if you know, but you do not do what you know of, this would be something that you will be punished for. Allah Azza wa says, لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Why do you say what, what, what you do not act upon? And in the scary hadith of Usama ibn Zayd ibn Haritha, may Allah be pleased with them both. The Prophet said, والسلام, on the day of judgment, while people are in hell, a man's guts will be spilled and he will turn round it, grinding it, and people will come and say, so and so. In, in dunya, on li in life or, or, or on earth, you used to come and order us to do good things and you used to forbid us from doing bad things. You were a good person. He said, yes, I used to tell you to do good things, but I would not do it. And I would tell you, stay away from bad things and I would do it. And among the first three, and this is a good question for quizzes, who are the first three to be thrown into hell? Who are the first three to be thrown into hell? A scholar, a martyr, and someone who pays his money or spends his money in the cause of Allah. These are the first three to be thrown into hell. The first one, the scholar or the one who teaches the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal shows him his favors and blessing. And he tells him, what did you do in the things that I have given you? And he says, oh Allah, I've learned the Quran and I've taught it for your sake. Allah says, you are lying. You learned the Quran and taught it so that people would say that you're a scholar and they had said that, throw him in hell. So it is extremely scary to know that if you acquire the knowledge and you did not do and act upon it, that you will be upon this. One would say, okay, this is dangerous. In this case, I will not learn. I'll, I'll remain ignorant. I remember one of the brothers, he was listening to music. That was about almost 30 years ago when I was still young and active and, you know, haram, haram, breaking heads. And now 
it's not bringing heads. I have people doing that, alhamdulillah. Um, no, I was just kidding. So I went to the brother and I told him, Akhi, what you're doing is haram because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as I was saying, he said this. <laughs> he put his fingers in his ears. I said, MashaAllah, you're doing this so that you cannot listen to the music? Turn it off. He said, huh? I said, you're doing this so that you would not listen to the music? He said, no, no, no. I don't want to listen to the hadith. So why? He said, because if I listen to it, Allah will ask me about it on the day of judgment. So by not listening to it, Allah would not ask me. How stupid can a person be? As long as you know, khalas, Allah will question you. And if you ignore and give your back to knowledge so that Allah would not question you, Allah will question you because you have no excuse in the land of Islam. Someone comes and, and, and asks me, Shaykh, what is the ruling on having intercourse during the day of Ramadan while fasting? He said, this is haram. He said, Shaykh, I did this. He said, okay, you have to give the expiation. Fast two consecutive months. And don't break your fast for 60 days, depending on the month. He said, Shaykh, wallahi, I didn't know that this is a severe punishment for this. Otherwise, I would have not done it. He said, well, you have no excuse because you are in the land of Muslims. He said, I knew it, it was haram, but I didn't know that it was 60 days. I thought maybe I mean, three days maximum. He said, no, as long as you know it's haram, you, you have to pay the expiation, even if you do not know what the expiation is. But if someone in Norway calls me and says, Sheikh, I embraced Islam two years ago, and I did this and that, I was doing it through last Ramadan and this Ramadan, until someone told me that it is not halal, it's not permissible. I didn't know. I thought that it was only food and drinking that we fast. So what do I say to him? Go. You have nothing to do. All what, do I repeat the days that I broke by having intercourse? Said, no. Do I give expiation? Said, no. Because you did not know. But someone in the land of Islam who knows and who has the ability to learn, but turns his back so that he would not know Allah Azza wa would hold him accountable. This beautiful hadith shows you the importance of knowledge. If you go back to your home and you teach your wife, you teach your children, you teach your neighbor something that you've learned, you will be rewarded even while sleeping on your bed. The Prophet says, alayhi salatu wasalam, whoever calls people to write guidance, will have a reward like that of those who follow him without it detecting from, uh, detracting from their reward in the slightest. So imagine how great rewards you can get. Now, a lot of the time people say, Sheikh, we have problems. We have sciences. We have theories that may go against Islam. So what follows what? Which is superior? Islamic sciences or conventional sciences? Who governs the other? This is a dilemma. And that is why a lot of the people are drifting away. Their schooling, their degrees, their studies are all done in a non-Islamic institutions, whether universities or uh, uh, research centers. And they are not based on Islam. They're based on theories. So you get people coming and saying, Ya Akhi, this the issue of eclipse, for example. We know exactly by the minute and by the second when the eclipse is going to take place. So why do people fear the eclipse and when they pray, they have to make themselves cry. Everything has been calculated and we know from here till 50 years from now when the eclipse is going to take place. This makes people fear Allah less. Why? Because they know that this is a, the eclipse is taking place. Not knowing that Allah Azza wa Jal has calculated every single thing until the day of judgment. And us knowing when the eclipse is going to happen does not change the fact at all that this is a sign from Allah 
And this sign is supposed to throw fear from Allah in our hearts. Do you feel f afraid when the eclipse takes place? Do you? People say yes. The majority say, yeah, it's nice. When the sun eclipses, people buy special lenses. They say, wow, it looks very nice. Yeah, you should, the minute it happens, you should come to the masjid and pray and try to make yourself cry. Because no force on earth, no force in the universe can make the sun's light go out. Except Allah Azza wa Jal. So this should throw fear in your heart. Is science superior to Islamic knowledge? No. So for example, what is the ruling on a person who commits, who fornicates or commits an act of adultery? Can we bring one witness to testify? Is it enough? It has to be four witnesses. What about if we have, mashallah, these cameras from all angles and it's on tape? Seriously, we're gonna get it on the internet. No, if we have this, what is the ruling? Can we go to the judge and say, so and so committed adultery with so and so and this is the tape? Is this possible? No, one would say, this is uh, science. I said, no, this is an Islamic issue. If I divorce my wife, how long would it be for her to wait before she becomes free and can marry someone else? Three? Three periods. A lot of the brothers say three months. This is wrong. The idda, the waiting period of a woman after being divorced the first or the second time is three menses, menses cycles. Three menstruations. Not three months. Three months is with those who have exceeded their age and they're 60 or 70, they don't have their period, or for those who did not, they're so young, they did not get their period yet, as mentioned in the Quran. So someone says, okay, my wife is 30 years of age, 40 years of age, and instead of waiting three cycles, we'll give her a birth uh, uh, test, pregnancy test, and if she is not pregnant, khalas. Second day, she can get married. Isn't it only just to make sure that the womb is uh, uh, clear or not? No, this is not the case. So, a lot of the times people come and say, Akhi, uh, I had an affair with a woman and after having the affair, we immediately got married. And she gave birth to a child that I know that she conceived before our marriage. But it is my child. What do I say to this man? The child is not yours. It was born out of woodlock. He said, I did the DNA. And the DNA came positive. It is my child. What do I say? Islamically, it is not your child. Even the DNA stated that it is. Therefore, Islamic sciences, Islamic Sharia, Islamic law, overrules any other kind of statements, sciences, uh, uh, theories in the modern science uh, uh, of today. Why? Because this is the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal and this is what the Prophet said alayhi salatu was salam. Therefore, I do ask you all to reevaluate. It is not never late. Some people think or have this notion that akhi, to study Islam is backdated. Now, on the contrary, wallahi, I know people from America, from Europe, mashaAllah, la quwwata billah. They did their BS in engineering and they did their MBA or the master's degrees in medicine or in whatever. And now they are in Islamic University pursuing their studies. And you know a lot of da'is, medical doctors who finished their Islamic studies and now they have both, alhamdulillah. So it is never too late. The knowledge that draws you closer to Allah, providing you have good intention, is the Islamic knowledge. Put a schedule for yourself, start to learn gradually. Because if you take everything at once, this would make you 
board and you leave. It is like brothers I've seen going to the gym doing bodybuilding. They go in the beginning, mashallah, with full enthusiasm, taking protein and, and creatine and things, you know, pills like this big. One of the boxes is, I saw the box in the pharmacy, this big, mashallah, and the pill is, what is this, yakhi, depository or, what are you doing? He says, no, this is your sheikh, protein, creatine. And they take it, they come for two, three months, they look in the mirror, there's nothing much, they, they let, let go. It needs a long time. Knowledge needs patience. There isn't any, you know, uh, fast food sandwiches. You can get, Ya Billahi, Allah, Shaykh, please give me something, you know, usul fiqh, fundamentals of fiqh, to go. So that I can, yani, consume it and... Psh. There isn't anything like this. You have to sit on your knees with shuyukh, recite books, stay late at night, record what you have seen, research, ask, analyze. Why did this go back to the sheikh? Why did you say this? Sheikh so-and-so said so-and-so. Try to get on and off with the sheikh until you grasp this information, until you learn it and you uh, 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 yani, digest it. Takes a long time, six years, five years, depending on the person. But you have to put a schedule for you to reach that and you have to know that the Islamic sciences are much superior and they overrule all other sciences. Wallahu a'lam wa nisbatul ilmi ilayhi aslam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyyina Muhammad.